Welcome to Healthy Leads, the one-stop podcast that bridges the gap between small to mid-sized businesses and digital marketing in this interconnected age of the internet and artificial intelligence. If you are looking to increase your online lead flow and close deals, or just someone interested in the fusion of business growth and digital marketing, this podcast is your avenue for success. Now, let's get to our hosts, Ryan Atkinson and Angel Ty LeBron. Well, welcome everyone to the Healthy Leads Podcast brought to you by Ellington Digital. We got a great episode today talking about how marketers are using AI with SEO to drive leads. And we've got Ryan and Angel on the show to talk about it. Angel, I'm excited about this one. And I hope you are as well. Of course, man, I have to use this in my every daily life. So and it has made my world a lot easier. I like how we were talking before the show as well. Um, how like SEO and PPC, they always go like pound and pound together and you're obviously a ppc expert but you've learned a lot about seo recently as well yeah so my original background has always been a ppc like i always kind of prefer ppc the only reasons is because like with seo both of them have a waiting period right the period mm-hmm. where you're just testing out stuff and then it starts to uh, you know ramp up but i just always felt like the immediate data changes from sending traffic that you're paying for i just always like the experience i like the adrenaline that it's just like all right i'm spending yeah. all this money i'll snap i need to make a change within the next hour because i just spent three hundred dollars today yeah you know, yeah so it's a little more exciting but i have gotten a lot of experience with the seo so i've come to understand it more and of course it plays an integral role in any businesses it will lead source lead volume and stuff as like everyone listening to this podcast you're familiar with seo no it's like a long-term game like it really is like you have to build like your domain authority you have to make sure you're targeting the right keywords there's so much to seo and like ppc you could probably see that rush uh way sooner than you could with uh, an <laughs> seo <laughs> definitely definitely yeah seo is definitely a long term if you do not have the runway for three to six months it don't even i mean the same with ppc so if you don't have that runway especially since you're spending your money so the seo is the same if you don't have the patience for it don't attempt it you know because you're just you're gonna try it out and then you're gonna come back to your you know chamber of commerce or something and be like man seo doesn't work you're gonna tell it all your friends that seo doesn't work no you just didn't take enough time you probably didn't put enough effort into it whatever it may be. Sure. So, yeah. every channel is so seo dependent especially on youtube i've been seeing with a lot of podcasts that i've been uploading is i'm doing the research through like hrefs and being like okay what keywords have a lot of global volume traffic potential but also have low keyword difficulty and once you make that shift to like actually a solid seo strategy it really does pay dividends and it's cool to see oh my god i'm getting way more views they're like oh my god i'm getting way more website traffic so yeah it makes it really cool to see once seo actually does work one yeah. that three and six month span does end <laughs> it's cool too because a lot of people they just think seo is just on uh google when it's actually yeah. i knew about seo before and right but i really started out utilizing linkedin seo and like mm-hmm. just through doing that like optimizing the banner and changing the head like the picture to have the little ring with a color around it you know to stand out more my tagline had keywords that actual recruiters and people hiring for my position would actually search you know so yeah. there's youtube there's uh, twitter there's the instagram so there's so many search engine optimization is just about the search engine as a tool is itself you know it's not just google specifically just on the search engine so i think there's, there's a lot of ways to utilize seo within a, a bunch of different platforms so if you're a marketer thinking your seo life ends at google you are wickedly wrong and we are going to give you some tools though to make that experience a little bit better and we're going to talk a little bit more why ai that role that is changing in uh, seo so i'm just curious like how much do you use seo for like pbc stuff mostly every day <laughs> yeah. anytime i'm so i would say in the beginning of creating campaign that's when i use yeah. it a lot but afterward i don't use it as much but i still yeah. be using it for example right let's say i try to come up with something for a new landing page i use yeah. it a lot for trying to come up with names for an no. offer or something like because sometimes i find that chat G- it gives you like a catchy name for an offer. So if I got a new offer coming out, I'm going to use for that from creating a campaign and I need more keyword ideas. I'll take those keyword ideas that I plug into ChatGPT. It'll give me some more. Then yep. I go back to the Google. I'll go back to the Google keyword tool and then I'll see, you know, what is the volume on these? What is the, the competitiveness? Yeah. The Ahrefs plug into there. This is what I mostly use for keywords and ad copy. For sure. And what we're going to talk about today with like using ChatGPT really to start us off in that SEO strategy is a lot of the keywords. And so if you think about like the whole SEO strategy, you first start with our research. So let's start there. You can use ChatGPT in a lot of different ways to get to use research. And I think the most obvious way is keywords. I think what uh, ChatGPT is so good at is what I've noticed is like plug in, hey, like I want to create a meta description.
description or a title on this. Can you generate a list of keywords related to this title? And it'll spit back there. Here's everything that's related to it. I think that's what's so cool. It's just super easy to get other ideas flowing uh, with ChatGPT when you're doing your content research. Get even better results, especially when you're starting to save your results. One recent way of backlink, if you're able to get backlinks organically, maybe you want to tell the person, hey, can you use this specific keywords within the URL of your page? Or can you put this as the specific anchor link? I have an entire document because a lot of people, they don't, they'll just start a new chat over and over and over. You can use one of your chats as like your main resource for SEL. If I know I have a client, we deal with a yeah. healthcare client. We have a senior living facility. I'm gonna have all the keywords that we previously used in oh. that chat log. And I could grab that as information. Hey, create something similar to this. This worked out really well. Create another thing similar to this. And I'll just feed the information over and over and it'll get better and more optimized. My keywords would be more specific to what I want rather than just starting a new chat. And then you have to feed the information, give it a very specific prompt yeah. and stuff like that. And so that's one kind of hack I've been, I've been using saving using that same chat, asking it, hey, give me a similar keyword to the ones ever above that worked out. That's amazing. That's a really good tip, actually, because I am someone that will create new chat, new chat, new chat. New chat. <laughs> With that, you'll be able to then ask what are backlink opportunities on like former blog posts. Yeah, like as long as there's kind of like a way to call out that specific prompt that you gave it originally. One way that I like to do, right, let's say we were posting content for one of our senior yeah. facilities, right? I had literally a bunch of templates. The fr I started a new chat called a LinkedIn post templates and the first message I sent I gave each template a name right For sure the template will go do the hook and then it'll explain like use these four points and then use this ending and I have 10 different templates like a bunch of different ones that it can cycle through and it's all based on is this a contrarian take is this a storytelling type of is this an observation that we're making and so I have all listed out and then so every time I'll have let's say an article that I just grabbed I'll copy the entire thing put it into the chat and say using this information use this template that I used in the first prompt and create a LinkedIn post based on that. And it's so much better than just typing in create a LinkedIn post on this because wow. now it has a template. So I use that. And then I also have another chat specific for hooks. So I have every 50 different hooks templates yep, that I can yep. use. Then I have ones for post endings that I can use. I always use that feature, saving the data from previous. Well, marketers pay attention to that one because <laughs> I that's actually a tip I, I did not know about. So that's actually really good. With ChatGPT, you're starting to start to say this. So you can get your keywords together. A specific prompt could be like, provide a list of keywords that are commonly searched for in the healthcare industry. And ChatGPT will then write down here keywords that are commonly searched for. And that's that's how you get to content ideas which is super fun because that's what I use ChatGPT for the most is, hey, can you write a blog post about this keyword or this keyword? And then it'll produce 650 words or whatnot of that keyword. And then you can just, it's a simple copy and paste, which I think is so cool. <laughs> I think another a really good hack that I just thought of too is the fact when we're creating content, one thing I've noticed is that sometimes we get a little bit too into the weeds of creating content for the algorithm. In the first episode that we did, I was talking about, you know, understand the platform that you're on, but let's not get so focused on the algorithm that we lose sight of that there's a real person reading this. Mm -hmm. And one thing that has really helped is that I'll even give the prompt as a starting point. Cool. If I so if I know that okay, a lot of people don't trust senior living facilities, I'll say create this article and create keywords that someone would use if they were looking to solve XYZ problem. Basically just put your print your pain point and then say create a keyword. How would somebody search? to solve this problem. That's a really good way to get keywords that are like specific. And then the thing about SEO is you want to go for the low hanging fruit first. Mm -hmm. So those longer tail keywords, you're going to want to go for first anyway. Like you're not going to try to rank for senior living facility. It's just like, hey, good luck doing that with a new website. So you could go for like the low hanging fruit, like I want to assess a caregiver home, something very low competitive. Yep. Maybe it got lower monthly searches, but it specifically addresses a pain point. And when that person reads your article, reads your content, they're going to say this person understands that they're more likely to, you know, fill out the contact form, call you up whatever it may be. There's a lot of good that happens when you do target these longer keywords, essentially, where it's like, oh, it might not be have as much volume, but you know the intent is there. And that's why it's super important to not overlook something like that, because you know exactly what they're looking for and you're delivering the content that uh, answers that question. I also want to talk about for like other content ideas is what I've been doing a lot recently is I've been putting the buyer persona in here. Hey, like I want to target like a data analyst or like a data engineer and create a 650 word blog based targeting these 
key points and make sure to hit on these points. And it'll always come back and it'll also include it. And within three minutes, you're essentially having a well-produced article that is tailored right to your specific audience for the keyword that they are searching for. Putting those two together, that's something that I've really loved about uh, using ChatGPT for all content purposes. I feel, like, I feel like a lot of people need to make sure that they're including a persona because if you're not going to address the person specifically, I think the best forms of actions, the best form of content are ones that actually call out person that you want them to read the article, like calls out your avatar and deters all the people that you don't want. That's yep. the best piece of content that you create because then nobody's wasting their time. You're going to have a lot higher engagement per views. Yeah. We're going to, you know, they might drop that actual comment. Like sometimes I read a lot of articles and like they never have a comment at the bottom. You know? Yeah. 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 I'll always say, oh, comment below. It's like, there's never any comments on, on articles a lot. So I always try to have like, a strategy. Okay. Like, what is a good way I could get someone to actually engage with the content afterward as well too? Is there a CTA at the end or something like that? So when you are like wanting ChatGPT to do like an article or something, what like do you put in? Do you put like the personas as well? Like the keyword? length that it should be or what else do you include in there to get it specific yeah, i used to use a tool called uh, jasper but i found that for at least you know me and a couple of the people on the team has tested it as well that jasper has a bigger problem with plagiarizing and stuff mm. there's a way that i found with chat gpt to get around it which is more like oh right in this writing style i, I know uh. there's a there's an author of an advertising book called blair ends he talks all about how to sell like, creative services and stuff like that so he has a really cool writing style so i might go on that the, uh, on chat gpt number one I, I don't like to give it big tasks because i find that the content then is like a little bit less that it's not as good as it would have been if you would have said only focus on this task like only focus on this sure. graph so i usually will feed it that if there's a template if i'm using a template i'll feed it the template i'm always going to give it the by the persona hey this is the person i want to talk to then i'll give it the writing style and then i'll say address this specific point right yeah i like to usually go for pain points what is the pain that they're feeling right now what, yeah, what is yeah. the problem that i can solve for them so and then i'll just go one by one paragraph by paragraph or point by point like i want to yep. get this entire section done and i'll just go section by section and i just try not to give like the end right mean entire higher article sometimes it doesn't do the best at breaking down each section rather than just going section by section and doing that i really really like that tip because sometimes when i have it rewrite a script for me if i was like if i already created like a script for an explainer video like we created or something i will always only do two paragraphs at a time like two short blurbs because when mm -hmm. i when it once it gets to like all this content in here i, I do see like, it's a little bit like diluted and yeah, it's not that is the perfect word diluted <laughs> yeah that was what i was looking for <laughs> and i think it i haven't used what i really want to do is write this in like uh walter isaac voice or like jk rawlings voice for example mm -hmm. and when you do that you actually see like good results with it because my biggest thing yeah. with chat gpt is when i create content i can always tell that it's written by chat gpt <laughs> and i don't know if it's just because i have it there but you know an article written by chat gpt but i think if you add flavor like that it could actually make it less chat gpt yes that that is literally like the trick to me like any content piece in general you can you can literally use that write this in the style of yeah. and insert persons if i was like i remember when i first heard about chat gpt it was a podcast and they were talking about oh they said write this movie script mm. for like a Steven Seagal or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, and like the way it broke it down, I was like, what? So I was like, it could really do this. And then I just kind of totally, I feel like a lot of people kind of, I did, I totally forgot about the fact that you can tell it, hey, write this, it's this person. So yeah. once I started doing that, it had a it has a totally different tonality. The way the sentences are structured, you're not going to get a bunch of un, un, unbreakable and, and mastering the art. Like it's all these like yeah, yeah. words that every single article that's written by ChatGPT has, like the dash dashes it always includes dashes i don't know why chat gpt loves dashes but it'll include that and then it'll include those like words especially if you're using like oh write me headlines yeah it's gonna always be like on a transformation like it always has these words and so yeah you could you could definitely smell it a while a mile away yeah transforming unlocking unlocking uh, they're uh, unlocking <laughs> you know, chat gpt so if you're listening to this, make sure unlocking is not in an article that you write, because I will sip it out right away. <laughs> exactly. They always, I don't know why it loves that word so much. I'm just like, I don't want to unlock. I don't want to unlock everything. Uh, that's super funny. And then there's also when I do like podcast titles, I mean, it always hyphenate stuff. I'm just like, take out these freaking hyphens. I don't want hyphens here. But that's another what? big one with it. Whenever you're trying to do a headline, it always includes those two dots. And I'm just like, man, can you just give me like a straight one headline, one sentence? 
sentence, please. Like, <laughs> exactly. It, it's tough. But I do want to move to our next segment as well. So a little takeaways there is make sure you write this in a different author than if you don't have a favorite author, get a favorite author or just find someone that you like. And so let's move to a specific tool that is helping marketers with SEO. I found a really cool tool. It's called Ali AI. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. And their headliner, this is not written by ChatGPT, I don't think. <laughs> Optimize, automate, deploy, and scale SEO, which I think is super cool. And one feature that I want to talk about that they have that I really like is their automated A-B testing tool. It's an AI right self-optimizing target keyword rich titles that self-adjust to the algorithm at rankings changes to maximize each page's traffic potential all automated. I think that is really cool because SEO is a super manual task to do. And if it can automatically do that, it makes my life a whole lot better. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. Like the amount of times I've, well, using this in the beginning, you have to audit and then you just kind of create that checklist yeah. of every single thing that you're going to have to do now. Is, especially if you have a website that has 50 pages. Like I know there's companies that we work with that have literally hundreds so of pages. Many. I mean, I have to go through each one, edit them in the description, make sure the title is correct. So look at the page. Does it have the links? Does it have, is it externally linking? Is the link broken and all that? For sure. Stuff? It helps to have something automate that and be able to check it over. Yeah. And I think like interlinking, that's another tool that they actually have as well. It's a tool called their interlinking tool. And I was looking at it earlier where gone are the days of manual hyperlinking and painstakingly searching for related information with interlinks. You can sit back and let Ali AI do the work for you. So it'll automatically interlink between all your different blogs is what I'm getting from this little blurb here which i think is super cool because interlinking is something that i feel like a lot of marketers just forget about is you have a ton of different blogs here and there's opportunities to link between them and but they just don't do it so i think that's a really cool tool that they have it extends the amount of time that because google's going to be looking at the amount of people that just that just bounce right so but for sure if you're able to extend that average time on site which is the best way would be like okay i know you've probably seen it in an article you're reading it and then you may get to a part where It'll, it'll have that link and it'll be something specifically about what they're talking about within that article. And then sometimes you're like, hmm, let me click on that one. Then you click on that one. And now you're on a whole different article. Then you're like, oh, wait, I have to go finish the article that I just read. You go back. And then yep. there's even another article. So it's like your time on site is greatly extended. So now Google's going to look at it and be like, hmm, people are spending a lot of time on the site. They're not for bouncing. Sure. They're browsing different pages for every session. This looks amazing. Let me, you know, boost their ranks up a little bit. That you just summed up interlinking like beautifully right there is it really does keep people on your site longer and everyone has been down a rabbit hole where you're on a mm -hmm. website and like for me today I was, I was on a website like looking at a bunch of like different recipes I'm just like clicking in between all these oh like what is this what is this what is this what is this and so you need to make sure you're interlinked I'm curious because this is something that I bat don't battle with but I think about a lot too when you interlink do you open it up to a new tab or do you once you click on it do you just change the whole page that they're on what do you I prefer to always open it in a new tab or sure. just for the sake of if a person ever wants to trip, sometimes you may just be under, maybe going under, I hope you're not driving. And I feel like, yeah, article is, I'm just thinking of like the, the easiest example. You could be driving or you could be doing something and it won't load as fast, right? Yeah. And then at that point, you're just like, all right, well, let me just continue reading, you know, the article that I was originally on. But then it's like, if your internet speed or whatever just cut off for that brief second, now you're, you just kind of always lost a person. You may just bounce because they're just like, oh, after three seconds, it is like someone just, if something doesn't load within one or two seconds, someone's just like, hey, whatever. You're just, off. Yeah. Yeah. They just, they just, leave so i always like to have it in a new page so that they can always just easily go back if they if something's wrong with that page i think that goes back to the user experience of like your website as well like you want them to have a good user experience and i think it's so frustrating when i go on a website and like i click on it and it just changes the whole page it doesn't open up in a new tab and like oh my god like i want to go back to this original page i have to hit the backspace 20 different times to get there so just saying from a user experience perspective as well like interlinking is super important and this tool apparently will do it for you which i think is really cool and then last little segment up here i always love these segments just talking a little bit more about what's coming up in the ai world this week slash month as it pertains to healthcare the healthcare industry Forbes came out with a sick article. Let's combine AI, tech, healthcare, and let's have a baby and see what comes out. And that's what Google's plan is to do. Uh, it's a Forbes article inside Google's plan to fix healthcare regenerative AI. And one of the headliners is here is they're wanting to take healthcare systems and, that are actively looking to explore the use of generative AI to streamline administrative tasks such as patient handoffs. This demonstrates the growing interest in AI to improve efficiency and reduce errors in healthcare operations. This is also always like a fun conversation just with my background in healthcare is this is a real problem. Like nurses are like actually like very burnt out and like there's a huge nursing shortage. And so Google's taken this approach of, hey, we're going to use AI to automate all these tasks, which I think is like such a big task that needs to be happening. Now. How many times you see a nurse, you might walk up to the front desk and just 
super attitude and immediately. Yeah. Just, I can imagine if their job was a little bit easier, they'd probably be like, you know, might greet you with a smile. Oh, hey, welcome. Yeah, yeah. The office today. You know, like here for your nine o'clock appointment. So I think the fact that they're making the job easier is gonna is gonna help a lot. Like a lot of people are talking, oh, AI is coming for our jobs and stuff yeah. like that. And it's just okay, you, you can say that, right? Like maybe there might be a small shortage cut, but if you are, you know, if you're making the job easier, wouldn't that just help you out more if you are willing to secure that job? So I think that's the thing as well. When you're applying it to healthcare positions like this that are like repetitive tasks, I don't think it's like really replacing jobs. It's just making their lives like easier because they are just so strapped on these repetitive tasks of just writing stuff down in like paper, like a fax machine. Don't know why healthcare sells fax machine. So I think it's cool. I think it's awesome that Big Tech, Big big Tech is taking a big, a lot of approaches helping healthcare. So I hope, actually hope this one works out with Google because that'd be big for the industry and nurses everywhere. 100%. And then I think about the fact too, if they're already struggling to find people that want to do the job, if you can make the job more appealing by saying, hey, we're giving you access to this tool that makes it even easier yeah. to do your job, people are going to be like, oh, I don't got to do baloney work and, you know, baloney. yeah, it's just like, <laughs> I get to use this tool and make my job easier. So I think that is going to help a lot. I don't think there's just going to be some mass shortage no. with the distributed field. So no, yeah. definitely not. Well, everyone, thank you for tuning in to today's episode. We talked a lot about AI, SEO, interlinking was a huge topic as well. So I hope you guys got some good t- takeaways you can find us on youtube spotify apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcast and definitely tune into last week's episode as well because we talked about ppc there angel gave a master class so tune into last week's this week's and we'll talk with you guys next week thank you so much for being here see you